Hello, uh, I'm making some boards today and I thought it might be interesting to share kind of how I think about it and approach it. So the board I have, um, this is a little board, um, just a little switching board with some MOSFET, MOSFETs uh, that lay on the right side and then over here on the left there's uh, ESP32. So just a board to give us a little more output power than the ESP can give by itself. So what I'm going to do, um, I have, what do I have for tools? Um, I have a pair of tweezers. These are actually like Revlon nail tweezers. Um, and I also have a, a set of real uh, SMD component tweezers. Um, I switch between these. Some work good for some components. Some work good for the others. Um, then I have a little, and I've done a few boards already, this is a little stencil and all the holes that you can see in the stencil uh, correspond to locations on the board um, where I want solder paste to go through. So essentially I'm going to put it on and scrape solder paste, solder paste across the top and that will leave me with little squares of solder paste wherever I want the MOSFETs to be soldered on. And I have, uh, let's see if I can take it off, I have a set of magnifiers I wear um, just to give me enough power that I can see this and not ruin my eyes. So the first step, I'm going to take the stencil, lie this on top, and it's probably not going to be easy for you to see. Basically what I'm going to try to do is equalize where the stencil lies so that I see the solder pads. Uh, kind of equally across all of the MOSFETs. I'm going to kind of hold it down with the two pads. And then I have actually an old credit card that I use for spreading the solder paste. So a little solder paste out here. And then I'm just scraping it across until I fill each hole. Uh, it takes a little while getting used to this. You need enough pressure that you fill but not so much pressure you kind of squeeze out underneath. Then after that I'm going to lift one of the edges up of the stencil and then that gives me the image with the solder paste. Now this stencil I did myself uh, on my laser cutter. Uh, you can also order them when you order your PC boards or you can order them um, from some other places as well. I'll put some links in the, in the description. So we can set the stencil aside and now we just need to be placing our components. So I'm going to turn it that way. This might be kind of hard to see. I'll try not to get in your way. Pick up a MOSFET. Now each of these, you can see they're pretty, they're pretty tiny here. Um, that's what's called SOT23 size. And the problem is how do I get that on there and get it uh, aligned, you know, without my hands moving around. So what I do is I do two hands. Um, in the, this hand, I have the tweezers with two, and then I'm going to use this uh, third finger. I just dropped the MOSFET. I'm going to use this third finger on the surface to give me some stabilization. And then with my left hand, also on the surface, I'm going to use that to also help stabilize. So, it seems that these always flip out the wrong way. So... First one, so I pick it up, my right hand stabilized, my left hand is stabilized. And then I just set it down carefully on top and then press it down. And when you do this, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be kind of close. What will happen is when you go to do the reflow of this, the solder gets pulled only to the spots where there's no solder mask, which is pretty much where we put the solder paste. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And that will tend to align the MOSFETs so that they're in the right direction. And as long as you don't have way too much solder paste, um, it won't bridge across. 
Now these components, because they're SOT23s, um, they really aren't that tiny. So the what that means is the leads are pretty far apart. So they aren't very challenging to do that well. If you have ones that have tighter components, like a lot of leads right next to each other, um, you need a better solder mask and slightly better technique. And you have to be careful, much more careful about how much paste you get on. Okay, that took me, I don't know, a couple minutes. And now you can see I have a board there and all the MOSFETs are held just by the stickiness of the solder paste. So, I have six boards ready. We're going to take those outside or to my other shop and we'll put those in the refill oven and we'll run them through a refill cycle. So here we are in my shop. Uh, this is kind of a weird spot. It's actually underneath my garage. So what I have, uh, let's start closed. So this is my reflow oven. Um, it's a heavily modified toaster oven. And over on the right, you can see it's running Controlio 3. So it's a kit that has the controller and then all the relays and stuff. And we open up inside. Zoom back a little. You can see there's a tray that comes with it, and then a bunch of insulation, another heating element, and then a thermal couple uh, to drive the, the uh, temperature sensor. So, this is really actually pretty easy to use. So, I have my little plate here. I'm set that out. Hope I can do this without dropping them. And I'm just going to start. putting my boards on. One of the nice things about this is it it's pretty big so you can do a lot of them. You know, I could easily do easily do 12 of these boards in here. You know, and if I wanted to do like 24 maybe 24 might be a lot, but 12. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that in. Choose bake. And I don't know if you can see that. It says bake at 60 degree. Okay. Not what I wanted. Let's go back to home. Reflow. So, uh, you notice it says leaded paste, 225 degrees centigrade. Um, the Controlio comes with a bunch of different uh, profiles uh, that control the, how, how it heats, how fast it heats, how long it holds that temperature, then how it cools off. And you need essentially a different profile for different kinds of solder paste. So this is kind of a standard one. I'm just using run-of-the-mill solder paste. Um, there's a little over on this side. I don't know if don't know if you can see it. There's a little uh, SD card on the right. So I do some other boards that take low temperature stuff. So they run with a different refill profile. So all I do is start. And right now it's going to do pre-soak. Continue when the oven is above 75 degrees. So essentially it's turned on, and up in the upper right, you can see the temperatures going up. So this part's pretty boring. I'm probably just going to stop, and then we'll come back when the reflow is getting close or totally done. So here we are back again. We're just coming to the end of the reflow. It did heat it up to the full temperature of 225 degrees centigrade, so pretty darn hot. And now if you kind of can see in the upper right corner, we're just waiting for it to get below. Okay, and that sound you heard, uh, it had opened the door automatically to help cool off, and now we're done. Um, and yeah, that 526, that's only for part of the process. Overall, this took about 20 minutes. So, if we open up. So, 50 degrees is not super warm, but still kind of warm. So, I don't know how well this will zoom. Uh, you can see I have some nice, nice little board there. I don't know. Let's see how close I can get. Yeah, that's about all we get. So, boards, all six of these boards, nicely soldered. Okay, so one more little tip. Um, when you get back in, 
you know, so I've gone out and I did uh, reflow. And you want to kind of do the reflow fairly quick. The soldering paste lasts for quite a while, but earlier is always better. So I uh, come back in, and then I have a nice bottle of isopropyl alcohol. So you know, my little spreader and my stencil both get cleaned in isopropyl alcohol. And then uh, rinsed off kind of with a, with a paper towel. And then I'll go wash them in just normal soap and water and make sure to clean up the area you have and, and make sure that any of the products you have that might have solder paste on them are also cleaned well.